yeah 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 it's yet another awesome day the lord has made and i'm here with a, a big man a brother a friend an advisor i can call him but uh, i don't <laughs> you know go hesitate to answer my call so uh, today i said we, we just want to dive into stuff showbiz music and anything entertainment like let's talk you know i said i cry what i you know koko kon de mabo mu ehu o e bia ba bedru no o hini di di a mete ni chen entensi eti i go straight and then you know start our conversation yeah my name is dj ashman and you are watching native television here tally keep watching yeah welcome back uh, like i said we want an fee na the internet friend na na yes all your hini o ba ejuma na aye wo mu no your hini wo Nti se ye ye chuchu nko mona mo beti ase ate ase nana me 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 hu di di wa me ka te me wo na obechi a bia da te me na fe ya o em se me na me mo akwa ba aha me mo akwa ba fi so wa be fie you know it's nice okay and because you see ache so eh eh no eh no cre boss eh no cre ya e din ko mo fu nso ache do ye shi a and all that ba na se bibia boko bibia boko adum ko we dem we break fast na mama be how oh Charlie, now we are at 2 o'clock <laughs> 2 o'clock in the afternoon i've been here breakfast can you can imagine un un tendi din te mana no you be a e do any said i come here my my problem was that um to when i wake up and there's work i have to do it my eating patterns are very rough you know but in run i do me the day me do quite late may try because me fu ye kese nti me try say me jai didi me jai didi before 6 6 pm uh, after 6 pm but oh, sometimes you're very hungry and unt mean that's a nti no jollof be pie and run ajo and i'm be here be be nti no me didi late nti me so i no pena come and said and me and i had stuff to do nti na was me here whatever and then nti watch out me name kora na ko je wiya to friends are no part on afi na me dey me dey you know so we dey make me 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 dey make me sir no pa me so name me type in so pa into buy me dey make pay so pa sa bibi warm water and some lime and a bibi sir type as and when me kai no me here na obi be bi sir say why na me dey make sir me dey me need hwe ni do any man e wie e sir no pay sir no e fe ni root tie me me fe ni mr romantic Aha. Uh-huh. Mo mo getting it wrong. Aha. Uh-huh. The the name was not romantica, was romantica. 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 Why romantica? Emma do dok no. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And then who is to now mad us on our boss? I grew up in Kotobabi. Oh, okay. You know. Now those were the days when we didn't have entertainers be brave send in the you know the internet and more via technology and more via the opportunity to do whatever they want to do uh uh-huh. and they happen to be one of the very few okay entertainers to have come out of miria yeah ben if i'm not exaggerating from bear 88 yeah and they ba into bear 90 1990 91 there about na me we secondary school and you fear you know many me playmates were all waiting for yeah o level results near the end you know that's when me started to say actively me chase the dream of making music near the end into i had a few people who saw what i was doing and they liked it and you know they also shared in my dream near the end and they all came around me and i i had in my house girls who wanted to be models who wanted to be singers dancers guys you know who wanted to be rappers singers and dancers and all that every time into me feel could have been every time and i had friends who come around you know to just catch catch some vibes on the mission and there were always always i mean most of the most of the people that came around were women You know, I don't know what it is, but I've always been that type of guy. 
And then also, yes, Inti, I said it in a song with Reggie. Um, sweetie, sweetie, you know. Yeah, yeah, uh, Reggie, many Reggie, yeah, on only the anyway. And when I did mine, I, there was a line in my, we say, hey, um, sweetie, sweetie, a friend said, a mad rock and root time, so on coming home to call, but they all me home about trepa. I was describing the, that woman, you know, in the sweetie, sweetie song, no. Okay. And I hear reality, so I don't know what's our time, no. Um, uh, yes, uh, uh, yes, around that time, there was someone like that. Or someone like that, you know, big up yourself, Maggie. You know, unfortunately, you know, we didn't we didn't grow up with a relationship, but you know, that happens. I mean, that happens. And see, um, then I ended up on radio in '97. You know, to 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 the radio, no, I don't know. Yeah, I can I can't any now. But once I'm by, maybe we feel your friends and all that were coming to you. No, did you mount stage and uh, BB? Oh, those days. I used to be an event organizer as well because if you don't organize your event, who will put you on on a concert? Oh, okay, so you organize your own event at Kotobabi? Yeah, I used to organize events in Kotobabi. You know, there, there was a um, there was a there was a there was a venue. It was actually a, like a, 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 a cinema, but I converted into um, I converted it into um, like a live concert. Yeah, venue once or twice. Yeah. Baby, no, I'm afraid, baby, Jonasco. I mean, you're a Kotobabi boy, so you know the Jonasco yeah. area. Yeah. Jonasco, yeah. minimum. Yeah, Jonasco, around that area. You know, I used to organize yeah, events. Yeah, yes, yes, mm. You know, so there were times when, you know, I would organize events and bring all the guys who had talent. So, Gunskele Munia Dena, they came from, they all mounted stages that I, oh, I yeah, okay. I put together. Mm, yeah, they, you know, I, they, I mean, Reggie came on a number of shows that same I, venue not the same venue a different venue yes superstars superstars from Abavana down yeah 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 you I know mean, I had an event there oh, where, um, okay. a couple of times one one of the events DJ Rabbit Reggie Freddie Funkstone all of them came through yeah they're oh, back wow. in the day and see wow. I used to do that and I also owned I also owned the I owned the Raga Fest brand there was a there was a there was an event called Raga Fest Raga Fest uh, 95. Okay. I did that. I did that. And um, just before I did the 96 one, just before I did the 96 one, the, then I had, um, I had to start preparing to go to Takradi. So it was a bit of pressure for me. So the second edition didn't take place, but I did, I did one. Adela Badi Beach. That, that was night beach. beach. Okay, that's ni 90, 90, 96, 97. Hmm. Raga Fest was in 95. 95, okay. okay. That's the first edition. Huge event. Wow. I think I have to do research on that one. On that. John Germain was in a group. Our own John Germain. John Germain was in a group called MGKK4. They were on that concert. Dead Buddy, Chrissy was on that concert. Black Prophet came through. Wow. General Marcus came through. Reggie Rockstone came through. I was on that stage. And a few other, others that I can't remember, you wow. know, but it was a huge concert at Labadi Pleasure Beach, so you can imagine. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I pulled that off, yeah. So what, what, what from the transition from being a, an event organizer, artist, from there to like the radio, everybody saying. I mean, you are you are you are an an, an art person, and um, you want to do um, things the way you want them to be done. And over uh, I wasn't really really out there like that. Okay. And it was because I I wanted things done. Right, I think I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Yeah, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Like, it has to be done the way it must be done. And see, if you would do a concert and I'll come on, um, on stage and in the middle of your performance, your mic will go off. And mm -hmm. no, then I wouldn't. I'd rather do my own concert where I have the power to ask for a, I mean, a, a proper set of microphones because I'm paying for them. Oh, okay. okay. Where I can ask for 
a, a, a better, um, you know, apart from sound, that even how the stage looks matters to me. And I will have the time, you know, and the power to decide how the backdrop should be and all of those things. And back in the day, we didn't have LED screens like we have today. So you paid, you know, an artist to design a, a, a banner, okay. <laughs> you know, and <laughs> sometimes I would have to sit by the artist, you know, to design the banner. You know, I will make contributions, you know, to how my banner should look like, the backdrop should look like, and all of those things. How the sound, you know, should be. And then even the music to be played by the DJs, how it must be, you know, I've, not me two notes, because I felt like I, I, I had an eye that most people did not, did not have. It's yen yen say yen yen say yen yen. And I set a few examples, you know, with Raga Fest, for instance, you know, was great. It was something else. In I was doing that. And then um, I had done um, this uh, single with Reggie, Sweetie Sweetie. I'd moved on, I'd, I'd moved on to do, um, to do my, my version, Sweetie Sweetie Part 2. And then after that, I ran into uh, Mr. Wilson Arthur, um, CEO, Sky Group of Companies. You know, then he was running Music Paradise. Oh, Bali, Bali Music Paradise. Later, Marco Kriku Manti Baron Jeme a slip, slip music, yeah. Um, uh, Mr. Wilson Arthur owned it. I mean, at that time, it was the biggest music store in Accra. Keu to Lala. I mean, Lala Nikwe, but just about three days ago. Those days wasn't like today. I mean, KJZ released no in a few seconds. It dropped no download. Wherever you get it from, you get it. Back then, the music would have to sit in a plane. Hold on. But if you want it fast, when I saw a car, I release sound. Yeah, Yankee, Low, JA, or anywhere in the world, there. It takes a few days. Before the songs get in. And that's, that's even shops that were on point, you know, they had their game on. You have proper links, sound, but within a few, within a few days. And Music Paradise happened to be one of those places no, almost all radio stations in a crowd that were like happening at that time had their music for music paradise so i had that line in one of your songs and you mean mama kai paradise i hear that line no nothing yeah um that line mm-hmm. it wasn't about that paradise line, it wasn't about the paradise music played mm-hmm. i thought it was about that so uh, fast forward how did you meet reggie Okay, so um, 1991, I finished my O-levels, and I started chasing music. And so I met my big brother, General Marcus, in a studio in Hacho. And immediately, we just clicked, became close friends, because we shared this music thing, you know, together. And so it, it, he became like, like my big bro. I was young and all over the place. He was mature, just two years older than I was, or I am, you know, but he he's very organized and very disciplined, you know, so it was good for me to just be following a guy like that, you know, because he taught me a lot, a lot, shaped me in many ways. So I was a Marcos, and um, we we're doing this thing until after chasing it for like four or five years, I thought it wasn't coming, and um, I always had it at the back of my mind that Charlie education is a whole thing. So in '94, I backed down, not completely, but I stopped hanging out around the studios and going to places and things like that, you know, in pursuit of the dream. So I and I signed up for this form A levels to go write my A levels because I needed that. So I signed up. So it was like a pressure if you bust your mom and papa wanna be. I just felt I needed it. Cause I've always felt that I'm not the frontline person. I've always felt I'm the background guy who who like a coach who say play there, play there, play there, play there. And you know, you become successful. But I can't I, I've never ever seen myself as the guy who can do all 
all that. I felt I'm more of um, like a groomer. Uh -huh. But to be a groomer, you needed to groom yourself first. So for me, education has always been something I've never played with. So I went back to school. So it was during school time um, that, you know, Marcus and I had a group going. We had a group called Le Legalize Illegal. Oh, okay. You had a group together. Uh, yes. But I had gone back to school, you know, trying to get my A-levels and all that. But he kept pushing. And Marcus was um, almost an, uh, like a resident entertainer with uh, Miracle Mirage Nightclub. He was there every time the club was opened. And when the place gets packed, he would get the DJ to drop a dub, you know, an instrumental. And he would go on the mic and entertain the people. So he was there. So anytime I get bored, like... Um, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, they're about when I'm not really like, then I feel like going out, okay. I'll go to Marcos, you know, at the Miracle Mirage. So we'll hang out, we'll do our thing, and then find a corner somewhere and sit and just, you know, reason, that kind of thing. So we're meeting n normally on Wednesday night. Okay. okay. So I had met DJ Rab. Before you met DJ Rap, uh, Miracle Mirage, uh, I know said do do motion or maybe say me name. Miracle Mirage was a nightclub. Okay. In Adabraka. Okay. You see the former um, Hot FM building. Oh, okay. That Hot FM building opposite Strawberry. Opposite Strawberry. Okay. That was Miracle Mirage nightclub. Oh, that's on the Farah Avenue. Farah Avenue. Before around Hotel President. Looks like someone at the gate. Let me open it. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, um, yes, so I, I had met DJ. Was, uh, we are talking about your current location you know, yeah, of okay. there. So, Miracle Mirage. Farah Avenue, close to Hotel President, okay. Adabraka. Yeah. So that's where Miracle Mirage Nightclub was. Okay. The DJs, DJ Joe, you know, may he so rest in peace. Sammy, the bouncer, nice guy. You know, we used to hang out there and talk. I was quite young then, very tiny. Which year? This was in 94. This was in 94, yeah, 94. 93, 94, because okay. I think it was, it was in December, it was in December there about, 94, that's when I met Reggie. Okay, so DJ Rob had come to Ghana as a, as a, as a tourist, an African-American tourist, you know, it's Ghana. And um, he had come to live around my neighborhood. So a brethren of mine who knew that I was doing music, you know, met DJ Rob who also like a DJ from New York, he felt that he needed to, you know, hook me up with, with rap. So I, I met DJ Rap through Zakor. And um, instantly DJ Rap and I just became a click, you know, because music again, you know, and he had love for dancehall music, oh, okay. though he grew up in, 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 in the hip hop world, but he, he, had, he had been to Jamaica and also okay. that, you know, will tell you how much, how deep he was into into dancehall and you know reggae and all that. And he liked my thing, and the fact that even though I was talented, an artist and everything, I was like I kept to myself. I was cool, very calm, reserved, and I had been toned down that much by Marcus. Okay. A lot of people do not know. I'd, yeah, Marcus. Marco straightened me, you know, because being with him, I saw how organized he is and everything, and I felt like this was a good move, you know, so I, you know, and DJ Rob liked that about me, and so it, it, I became his tour guide. Oh, okay. I would take DJ Rob around, we'll visit places, I'll show him the places and things like that. So one Wednesday night, I said, well, can we go to the club? My friend works there, you know, so I took him to Mark and Mark Night Club. And we're partying, and on that night, Reggie Rockstone and Freddie Funkstone came in with a guy called Henry. They used to call him Home Base. 
people who attended um, KNUSD back in the 90s know home base. Everyone knew home base. You know, home base and Reggie had a very good relationship. I think Reggie had lived with um, Stone Base's parents okay. before, something like that. You know, From Mot Tennessee. no home uh, Motown days, oh. something like that. Yeah, I think I faintly remember him saying something like that before. So Reggie and Home Base were like brothers. So we were in a studio, no, in a club that night when Home Base rushed in and told DJ Joe. That Charlie, my guys come, but he'd be like, your bounce or something. So DJ Joe rushed out with home base and brought the guys in. When they came in, Charlie, these dreadlock wearing guys, you know, once you see them, their striking appearance and everything tells you that these guys are some people, you know. So they came in and then I eavesdropped on their conversation. I realized they were musicians, of course, I mean, from their looks and everything. Then it was time for them to go on a mic. Homebeat had done some arrangements and all that, you know, so they went on the mic and Reggie started saying, yeah, you want to hear some chi rap, you want to hear some chi rap on that night. Wow. Interestingly, he didn't do any chi rap. He just said, I'll go, I'll go, and that was it. He didn't do much. But I think from the response he had, he, he was encouraged, you know, because a few weeks after that was when Cho Boy came out. Cho Boy, you know, was recorded. That was the night. I walked up to him and I said, you know, I'm Rutai. I'm with my DJ friend from New York. We, we like you guys. My DJ friend would like to talk to you. He's a music producer as well. And he said, oh, go talk to him, let him come. Tell him to come. So I went back to DJ Rob and I said, you know, I'm superstars. They said they want us to come. <laughs> so we moved to them. And then, you know, we introduced ourselves and, you know, found some tables somewhere at the back back of the club i mean behind the the club there was a place there was an open air space we went out there there wasn't loud noise like loud music so we went out there and started talking and then they said wow producer well they've been in town for a few days but you know they didn't know who to start doing anything with because they had you know asked around and it didn't look like there was anyone so well they said okay cool there was a studio around laboni called um, Grove Music. It was owned by, jo no, sorry, George Brun. Oh, okay. So that morning from the club, went straight to George Brun's place at the Laboni area. The studio was open for us to go in. DJ Rap saw the equipment. Well, like, I can do something with this. You know, they turned the things on. DJ Rap touched a few things. You know, sound started coming out. Cool, he's a producer. So okay. from the place, I mean, from that studio, we dispersed. Reggie went to his place. DJ Rab and I went to Kotobabi, you know, to return later in the day. <laughs> mm. We came back and then we started talking about going to the studios. <laughs> they had been told about a few studios around. The first studio to, to visit was um, CHM. Okay. Combined House of Music. Combined House of Music. Matahiko. Okay. That building housed CHM the studio and Vibe FM at the time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people don't know this, but Vibe FM started from Matahiko. Okay. Yeah, in that same building. <laughs> Those who don't know Vibe FM, Vibe FM is now Live FM, 91.9. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so we went in there, and guess who we met? Yeah. Who? We met the, the, the silent giant. Yeah, Mr. Marley, the largest. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that day, that afternoon, Mr. La Mr. Yeah, Mr. Zap Marley was there. It was so nice meeting him. I had never heard of him. I'd never met him, but I saw a very beautiful person that day. And guess who was his assistant? Coxta Maclo. Wow. <laughs> Coxta Maclo, formerly with Va uh, Joy. Now with um, EIB. Okay. Cox was working at the studio. Wow. Was up, yeah. And Danny Blue owned that studio. I don't know if you remember Danny Blue. No, I don't know him. There shall be sunshine after rain, so why worry now? There was a song from the late 80s. 
Yeah, that was a big song. KKD used to play that a long range. Is that a Ghanaian song? Yeah, of course. A Ghanaian. He lives in Minnesota in the, U- in the U.S. now. I know that because I dated a cousin of his, like many years after I'd been to his studio and all that. You know, so it was nice being in the studio. We started talking. Zap loved the whole idea of trying to bring hip-hop and high life together. And he was excited about the whole concept and he couldn't wait, you know, to get involved. So, well, after that day, we scouted a few studios, but, you know, um, Reggie and DJ Rab and a few others, others around, you know, thought Zaps was a, was a place to get the sound that we needed and, and, and the ideas and everything. So, you know, we moved in. I wasn't, I wasn't around when... Um, when Choboy was recorded, okay. I wasn't there when when Reggie laid the vocals on that night. But well, I don't know if it was during the day or night. But mostly we worked in the night. Okay. But I saw when it was being mixed because I sat in there with you know DJ Rab, Zap Mallet, Reggie himself. Sometimes Spongy will swing by. Spongy Anov. Yeah, will oh. swing by. Wow. You see, this whole thing, the beginning of this whole hip life thing, you know, it was more like um, like a melting pot of ideas. Everyone had something, you know, to contribute. And Reggie, I keep saying, Reggie is blessed in a, in a very special way. Guess what? Around the same time Reggie was trying to stage this revolution, he had almost everyone that he needed okay. to play a role. Artist to represent Ghana and make the very first Hip Life album be representative of Ghana, okay? And, and be the, the mouthpiece of the new generation of Ghanaian artists that were coming up. He had all set. None of the boys that Reggie featured on the very first Hip Life album, yeah, Maka Maka, was someone that needed to be coached to do anything. All the artists were established names. They were not like commercially out there, okay, but but in but, the in, but in, in schools and colleges, okay, okay. these names were big names, and some of the names were paid to appear at certain events. Oh, really? Even though some of these guys, in fact, almost all the guys on the album had never done any, like, proper recording yet. But they will be paid by Paul Dogbe. Paul Dogbe owned um, Recognize and a few other events, you know. I, I hear he, he is father of um, the boxer, the Dogbe boxer. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. Uh, 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 uh. Nehu, 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 yes. You know, the young great boxer. That's his dad. His dad was our friend. He used to organize events for us. Wow. Yes, I just found out from General Marcus. I was asking, ah, is it Paul? The same our Paul, like Paul, you know, House of Lords Hotel. Because the father, their, their family used to own a hotel. In fact, they still, the hotel is still there around the um, Charter House area. Oh, Audome. Audome Estate area. There's a hotel called um, House, of the, House of Lords or something. Oh. They owned it. So Paul used to be there all the time. He was a sharp guy. Paul had eye for quality. Paul was the guy who was organizing events and things like that. Yeah. And Paul had started paying some of us, you know, to appear on his, you know, to put your name on his flyer. You, ha- you had to get paid. You know, so all of that, the grounds were set. On the media front, publicity, as in like promotion and all of that. Reggie came in at a time when Ghana had had, um, I don't, I, I can't remember, I, I, I don't think I saw the McEgan days, okay. but for me, my very first time I saw like a youthful, funky TV show that focused strictly on arts and entertainment in Ghana, Smash TV, okay, and the producer of Smash TV loved Reggie. Nana Champon Abigi, you know, he's director of the Amata Edu Center for um, Excellence at the Africa, Africa University College of Communications, where I, I had my, my degree and everything. So, 
you know, Reggie met some people. Then he also came to meet Vibe FM coming up, Joy FM around that same time. And he knew some of the people from Achmota School, some of the, like, the DJs and presenters from Achmota School. His mates. His mates, you know, who were all just blown away by the new thing that he had brought in because they knew him as a dancer. He came back as a crazy rapper. And they loved it. And they were, they, they, I mean, they would do anything for Reggie. You know, so for me, it takes a guy who's specially blessed to have all of that coming together to play, play for him. You get it. We're only lucky to have had the opportunity to be welcomed by him, you know, into his fold. Because Reggie took me in as like a younger brother. You know, he would tell me stuff, would share stuff. Sometimes he'd say, oh, Charlie... I want to start some song, eh, but I need a, I need a start. If you give me a start, this be the concept. Um, like, as will be a way to quiet or uh, wait, uh, as a bugger be another one for be thrown on letter be the bounce of visa. And yeah, I started writing that song. Oh, the, really? Yeah, the first lines. But the thing about Reggie is, you only have to say the first few lines, and the next thing you hear, you will be blown. You're swept off your feet. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're in a studio working, and he will. He'll hit a he'll hit a point like you hit a block, you know, and he will ask for something. You say something, just say one word, and that's it. <laughs> with all this, then uh, you were doing uh, uh, dancehall, reggae, raga stuff all the time. Yeah, but Reggie was also doing the rap thing. Yeah. So how did you match? I was. You see. I keep saying this. Reggae, dancehall. Um, I heard um, Lingwakat say it on your show that raga, you know, has always been, has always been big, you know, in Ghana. Because we're here when Shaba, Shaba came through, Shakademos and Plies came through name them yellow man came through all of these were dance solo artists you know and they came to you know give great account of themselves not just people who just pass by yeah. they were well received and so it means that ghana has always been that's what i'm saying massive but the thing with um Reggie and I, Reggie, 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 he's a very open-minded kind of guy and well exposed even back then. And so he knew, and it wasn't new. I mean, dance all and reggae, hip hop reggae wasn't a new thing. Shaba had done stuff with KRS one and it was big, you know, um, later on in the mid nineties, Bone Tequila had this huge thing with Buster Rhymes. And, and, and that was even after we had done our thing. So it was, it, it was an idea that was, that was, you know, that was being peddled around. Hip-hop reggae, hip-hop raga. You know, and in Ghana, we had already started doing that. Hip-hop artists would come together with reggae, like dancehall artists and do collabs and things like that. When you attended a, the event at Agis and Motown and Presec and Laboni and all that, you know, rappers came together with dancehall raga artists and they did stuff. What was High Life then? Beautiful. High Life was there. High Life was big. I remember that in the beginning... Or prior to Reggie's coming in, there was a face of our music where artists like myself and my contemporaries, you know, knew exactly what we wanted in terms of sound. But there were, I mean, there was, there was not a single producer who could give us that. So most of the rap songs... Is it because... You guys didn't fetch for it, or because back then we had good songs from Lumba and Co. No, uh, you see, the, the the sound when when you listen to a proper like when you listen to Sweetie Sweetie, compare Sweetie Sweetie to any song, any high life song of the time, okay, and check the weight of the sound. 
the weight. I'm talking like weight. When you hear like like you hear kick, you hear you know, when you hear the the, 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 the bass. Because for us that was it. Hip hop has the same. Hip hop, you know, also um, it, it it rides on drum and bass, okay, and 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 the production, the melodies. I mean, the the rhythm, you know, wasn't the same as as high life. And the thing is, most of the people that you met in the studios, working as sound engineers and like producers were all people who were high life inclined okay so when you go in there as a rapper and you want to do a hip-hop song you want to do a rap song they produce beats for you and the beats are all like high life do you get it so for people like us well i know this is not what i'm looking for i'm looking for like a proper dancehall rhythm this sounds to me like high life or some that Ghanaian gospel sound and it was okay. all, and it was all because most of them were playing in churches oh, and the producers the producers the producers were playing in churches and so if you, if you you know you happen to be in studio with them and you're working the sound comes so close so close to gospel or high life and it was a huge challenge so that's the reason why most of you use foreign beats to do your stuff so, so back then for us to get it kind of right We'll go to Prime Cut Sounds or go to Music Paradise and record instrumentals to rehearse with and also to perform with. And some of us actually recorded our voices on these beats that were, that were imported. But we didn't like it. We wanted to be original. That's where Reggie made the difference. Reggie came in, Reggie came in met DJ Rab in Ghana. Zap, who is a hip hop producer? Who's, who's a hip hop producer? And then we met Zap Mallet, who had been an urban gospel artist and was also pursuing this whole thing that the Joe Metals and the Quissy or Things are doing today. So you see, those guys, you see, all these guys must come together one day and celebrate Zap Mallet. If, if, um, the, the other one, the other fine one that, that passed, Danny Nette, yeah. you know, happened to be alive. Zap Mallet and um, Zap Mallet and, um, and, and, and Danny Nette and KK Dua also passed, you know. Those guys must be celebrated. These young people who are doing urban gospel today, because those were the people who started this whole culture here. And 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 were not recognized. Danny Nete, you know, pushed, kept hold. He kept. He, well, he held on till he passed, and so I was, he, I was he gained it. Okay. He gained the attention, but he, they they had been through stuff. I was I was checking on like on one or two things about Danny Nete. I realized uh, he was also a producer. But before then, I should for it. We are still able say, "Yet he he treat us and now to be big a cry." He real bro fumu. What he has here? Monte has here a cry. What he has here? Uh, I'm not TV, you know, but I feel say, uh, comfortable more, say, or can I? May I search Kakra music than in it, not your producer, like music producer? Because I have a conversation with uh, Dead Body, Kwesi. I don't know, guys, I don't know, Danny, Danny, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, yeah, yeah, let's see. All the people that he mentored, yeah, those who listened to him and respected him have seen greatness. Joe Metal, he, in my opinion, Joe Metal is the greatest gospel artist to come out of this country. I've said it. Ever. And that gospel artist will get paid too. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, let's, let's, let's pay respect where it's due. Joe Metal, in my opinion, has pushed Ghanaian gospel music to a point. See where, where he started from, from the soul winners days, young guy, and you could tell the hunger for success in his face. When, when you see that video, um, the soul winners video that they, they did, they did at the, at the beach. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah like, like fishermen and, yeah, yeah. You, could, you could tell, you, Walabolo, Walabolo, 
wait, when you, wait, when, if you look at that video, you see Joe Metal in that video, you can tell how, how blessed the guy is. You, 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 because from back then, this is like how many years ago? Like 20 something years. Well, I bolo, well, uh, 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 so, so, so winners, they have the first so winners and then the second so winners. He was with the second so winners. So wasn't he the one that was singing there? He did a walabolo. Walabolo is like, uh, let's say, 12 years ago. Wait, wait, listen to that song. You see, it's just, you know, and and this is this is one of the products of Daninete. You get it. So for me, Daninete was one of, but to the to the to the discussion, producers were a huge problem to the Ghanaian to the Ghanaian artists. I mean the, then the new generation of Ghanaian artists, you know, were coming up. So Reggie came in, had DJ Rab and Zab Malet synergizing to create his music. And it came out it came out so wicked. The only the only artist that had anything close Okay, truth be told, I think Mahoney P, may he so rest in peace, he passed a few months ago. I think his, his thing was heavier. His style or no, production? The production was heavier. He did it in some studios in Holland. So that's where he grew up. His mother lived there, so he was picked from, you know, Kumase, Fantinu or wherever, to Kumase, to Holland. Yes, and he grew up there. He loved to rap. His timing and everything was funny. The timing. He he has he had a big problem with timing. Okay. If it wasn't for timing, that guy would have been something. You know what I mean? But his timing was the only thing that you like um oh uh, what's what's this guy's name? There was another one. Me, you know me, I say names. <laughs> uh there was this recent artist. Uh, one of these oh there was some other like Deba. Okay. You know, thereby his timing is, but he's wicked, yeah. wicked by his timing. Yeah. Then the then Akatechi the rapper, yeah, Pharaoh. the Pharaoh, mm -hmm. wicked rapper by his timing. You see the timing thing. So the timing thing took something away from from Mahoni P's thing. Had it not been that, Mahoni P would have been one. But he we recognized him. Yeah. We did, because apart from Reggie, his thing was was the next thing okay. and we loved it but the timing again you know so reggie and Re reggie zapmalet dj rap mm -hmm. yeah quality sound just the way we wanted to hear it okay from chm from chm so then every, everyone got encouraged oh so this thing we go fit do arm for here okay. and yeah you know okay. but it, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy like that. So apart from Reginald, no one could actually create that same thing. Okay. So Reggie's thing was different. And the reason was that, you see, like I said earlier, Reggie is very exposed to all kinds of music. Reggie is exposed to a certain variety of music. Because of the America in the UK. You know what I mean? Plus, Ricky Osei's son. And Ricky Osei was designer to, like, Hollywood stars. Isaac Hayes and all those. He, he designed for them even before Isaac Hayes came to Ghana. In the 60s, Ricky Osei was, I mean, uh, St. Osei was doing works with Hollywood stars. And Reggie was there. You know what I mean? As a single son. Where did where did Dada Bana Chapel? No, he's been a Dada B for I mean all his life. Dada B all his life. You know, so you I mean you you can't you need to mention anyway. <laughs> you see, then um so so his his understanding of music, Reggie will go through his records and he'll bring a record and say, I want to sample this drum pattern or this bass line or this guitar. And Zap and, and DJ Rab will have to make that happen. And you see, his, 
his knowledge of the music, no, it was so broad, sir. When he creates the music, what did that? But you never imagined it to sound like this. You know, to sound this fresh again. So it got people from his days appreciating it. And the younger generation hearing his thing for the first time also going crazy for it. Because it was in a language they could hear. And the beat was anything that you hear. You know, when any other radio stations, you know, play anything from wherever. And I mentioned this radio station bit because there was a point, yeah, there was a phase in, in our music history where musicians, I remember the likes of Rex Omar and um, uh, a few people, Rex Omar notably because he was the, the most vocal around, uh, uh, Man Zibanat Brew, well, not correct day, so they were all like, the conversation went on in their camp. But apart from them, Charles Amor. And then a few other people were bitterly complaining that the media, radio stations in particular, played too much of black American music. And it was true. And it, it, it got to a point where, and in fact, that was a reason, that was a reason most young people did not really gravitate towards high life because not yet it was dead i mean high life if you if 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 you were born in the 70s late 70s 80s you heard the ampofo jays and the adofos and the I mean, name them you heard all those they don't them on radio. but what you, you i mean there was a time on on gbc okay. where on G, those days gbc2 okay. played more of urban music and and they even had time for guitar band music on gbc fm back in the day there was a time i think for best of two hours they used to play guitar band music where they play high life apart from no no they played more of abro they played more of important music and then privatization of yeah, radio also came in yes and then Joy FM, um, uh, Vibe FM came and all of that. And they were also more of Abrofonium, okay. you know. And then GBC, GBC, GB, I think GBC had started GBC Radio and were doing that. And then I, in the mornings on GBC Radio, I think... Is it Radio GR? No, no, it wasn't even GR. Oh. It used to be GBC FM. <laughs> it used to be just GBC FM. And they had something called High Life Agogo. I think they're best from nine or so to twelve or say and they played strictly high life. Opa. And opa. Apart from that time, no, most it was more like talk and then music and then music, no crowd. No, they, they even played they, they they had a show called um, Down South where they played a lot of South African music because then the apartheid thing was was still in, in, in place and were fighting apartheid, you know, so Ghana's contribution to the call for freedom, you know, and then the lifting of apartheid and all you know we had a lot of south african music and then they played latin american music as well there was a slot for latin american music where they played a lot of salsa really yes played and they, they even had a slot for calypso where they played a lot of caribbean music as as ghana music was and so ghana music had its time okay but it wasn't enough and then we, and then the KKDs and all also came in, and because we're fresh, young, and funky, and we're exposed and all that, they also wanted to play something foreign, and so KKD also played a lot of foreign music, you know. And at the time, KKD and I, not not the Ayele few, or no, not 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 Ayele at the at the few beautiful, great uh, 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 broadcaster. She also played a lot of foreign music, and those were the young ones that a lot of us. Used, used to listen to. So Ghanaian music had some time, but it wasn't enough. And so a group of musicians came together trying to fight that, to correct that. that was then the Rexomas, Amanziba, um, Samalosu, those days. I mean, artists of, from those days, yeah, Randy Nunu, all those artists came, came around with, you know, that, that uh, 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 problem. We're all complaining about the fact that we're not playing a lot of Ghanaian music. Okay, so 
around that same time, because I attended, I attended two meetings, or we met. Yeah, we attended two meetings that that discussed this subject. They call this alliance for alliance of music professionals. Uh, no, Association of Music Professionals, AMP. That's where I met my first employer, Wilson, Wilson Arthur, because he attended that meeting. That meeting was attended by Kujuin Chi. No, I'm, I didn't. I don't remember seeing Amanda Baba. I saw Rex Omar. I saw a few other people, and some media people, even you know, some writers and all. The first meeting was done. It was held at um, Afrikiko. This was in 94 or so. The second meeting was held at Vibe from the eighth floor, Trust House. And then there was going to be a third meeting to elect executives for the association. And then the association just fizzled out. But there was still the savior. Reggie came and brought Hip Life. And then Hip Life kicked foreign music out our radio space. Because there came a time when, I mean, our music became so powerful that when you go to the club and they play too much foreign music, people sit. People sit and won't dance. Once the DJ starts playing Ghanaian music, dance floor gets filled. See, we got so powerful that a nightclub owner in Nigeria, I think the biggest nightclub also, they, they call it Night, night Shift Coliseum. Yeah, the guy was picking an artist from Ghana, almost fortnight on fortnight basis, to Niger to go and perform. And according to those who went, Tic Tac went, Lord Kenya went, Reggie went, and I think later VIP also. All the artists who went will tell you that when they got there, that they were in the late nineties. In the late nineties, they were treated like, like superstars. So Niger was importing our music, our culture into their space. What happened? What happened? <laughs> Question for the ghost. So from there you moved into radio. You said you met Mr. Wilson Arthur. After that, after that meeting, the second meeting for the supposedly um, okay that I can't even I can't even describe it as such. That it wasn't it wasn't an association. It was yet to be. Vienna. An association was being planned. It was still a concept, an idea to to implement. After the second meeting, um, General Marcus and I, you know, I did, I did, I distributed General Marcus's music. I was like in charge of distribution. So what happened? We were were importing the CDs. We're cutting the CDs in the U.S. and then. We will distribute the I will distribute the CDs to the shops and then give them a little time and go around and check who's who sold what and then I'll collect the cash. That's your Marco songs. And yeah, bank whatever and then my work for the day is done. You know what I mean? I was doing that for both the CDs and the cassettes. So I I met a few people through that. I met um, I met Father Dixon when he was not the 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 the, the mirror shop around the UTC. They had one shop before the mirror shop. That one that made so much noise when it was opened. Everyone wanted to go and see that mirror shop that Despite had opened. That's the the, the Despite shop we have now. Now, that was the back, mirror shop. The mirror shop back before the mirror one. There was one B on top of a building around Makola. I used to go to Father Dixon to go and give him cassettes. Is it the one at uh, 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 drag, the drag? Or drag. Okanshi, the Okanshi area. He was up there. I don't even think he would even remember me. But I saw, I met with him a number of times. In fact, he was the one I was doing the business with. I'll go and give him the cassettes. He will place it there on the shelves. And then, okay, until the, the two, next to his rubber. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so I'll do that. Collect the money, bank, go home. Work is done for the day. And I was going around all the music shops because I had music in almost all of them and I had, the, I had my records. Wow. So I'll just go around and do that business. And so I had that experience as well. So on one of our rounds, one of the rounds, you know, to 
go collect my music. Marcus joined me on that day, you know, just to talk to the people. And we went by Music Paradise because we had music there as well. In fact, the Music at Paradise, he, Marcus personally, handed the CDs to, to Mr. Wilson Arthur, the owner of the shop. So that day when we were going there, we were actually going to collect our kwacha. <laughs> and then talking about kwacha, were you really making money out of music then? It, it, that, that, that is when it was an industry. That's when you had music shops that were selling music. That's when, that's when this music thing was paying everybody in the enterprise. DJs were paying, were being paid. Oh, you know, Payola. Well, you can call it that, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't want us to call it Payola. Uh, because um, it was, it was more of a um, business. Okay. Let me show you how. So I'll start with, um, I'll, I'll use um, the case of, say, Ajikot. Okay. Or goodies music or um mention the record labels back then Ajiko, goodies music slip music big band kitchy the spy despite all of that you see those days when they say a record label they were not just some boys just mentioning some name that sounds nice and say that oh that's my record label oh that's our record label and it doesn't exist okay those days it, they existed at court music had his offices you know at coco memory goodies music had his place at um caprice opposite the um, boom rank nightclub they, they were they were they were establishments we, 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 with the with the year we are talking about recording uh general marcos yes where like where was Ajikot and those record labels? They they hadn't come in then, okay. but they came in. Okay. okay? But um, talking about the years we were going about yeah, companies companies such as you see we our case is not a typical case okay. of the Ghanaian uh, musician business. Okay, because we made we made some mistakes somewhere along the line, and it affected then. But even we were working for a record company. We're working for Afri Jam Records, Af African Jamaican okay. music, okay. you know, owned by General Marcus and Mr. Norman Fish, mm -hmm. an American Jamaican investor that came to Ghana to do this. Uh, so General Marcus owned his own record label to produce his album. The man that the man that discovered Marcus gave Marcus a part of the company. Okay. So it was a company co-owned by Marcus and Norman Ward, the producer. Do you get it? So eventually they were going to produce other artists from Africa. Okay. So from here, they discovered a guy or a group in Morocco. Okay. But it didn't really work like that. But, you know, great talent. So how did uh, 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 General met that man? Marcus met him in a club. Maraca Mirage. Oh. No, he, no, he met, yeah, he met him at Maraca Mirage, yes. You know, back in 94, 95, there about. Oh. But let me describe how this whole music industry thing used to be and how tangible it was, okay? Unlike today where it is just, um, people just say things. You know, oh, we're working for this blah blah blah, and or oh, record label blah blah blah, and it doesn't exist. So Ajikot had his staff, okay, okay who included not people who were on his payroll, but they were more like his producers, okay, his music producers. So the the guys in the studios. Who own either own the studio, or you take them, you rent the studio, take them into the studio, and they produce the music for your artist. Okay, so JQ was a producer for 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 Ajikot because he, JQ was producing most of the artists under Ajikot music, right? 
So JQ was making some decent money from Ajikot as a producer, working for Ajikot. He could do other people, okay? But of course, for the relationship they had, he would always prioritize when it happens to be Ajikot's artist. When the music has been done from Hush Hush or wherever that JQ would choose to work or wherever Ajikot and JQ will agree to work, the next step, promotion. Ajikot had people whom he gave money, budget to, okay, to go around and to distribute the promotional copies of the CDs to radio presenters and DJs across the country. Okay. Okay. Now these promoters working for the court, when they leave Accra, they leave with cash. <laughs> okay. okay? Sometimes in some bags, you know? and travel across the country and pay DJs who work with radio stations and, you know, like popular joints and, th and stuff like that. And so if the guy comes to, say, Takradi today, he, he had a network of, these, produ these promoters had their own network of DJs and presenters that they work with. So once he touches town, Everyone within his network knows that Asme Siaba or Wahimfi Nightclub and Wahimfi Hotel and all the DJs will meet with him for their copies of the music and your envelope. Okay? But guess what happened next? The moment he comes to Takrade and does that, say, Oba Takrade, Friday, a year, bear say three, four, and Obe do Takrade, not by. 5 p.m. We're distributing Yumnevia. Be rest assured, by Monday, a Beku container and all the music shops in Takrade, there's demand for the music. The public is asking for the music. People are already going to the music stores to ask for the music. Saturday. By Tuesday, people are asking. Omwa, Omwa, Villages closer to, like small towns closer to Takradina and, the and, and those places. No, I want to say, book back a really easy for fro. Right, I want to say book back a really easy for fro because all those places, no, the people they listen to the radio stations in the capitals, either the district capitals, now I said the regional capitals, no, or more effect in the cop the little districts, no, near the Adinina, right. Until the demand will come from music lovers from all those places. Almost so Takradi no binyanyum no. Until people will come from Takwa and whatever and whatever all to Takradi Abeku container. Wow. And start pressurizing Abeku nyum no eh. <laughs> so now Abeku container will have to call Ajikot and say, oh, Momami, it be a Momami uh, five boxes to start, Momami ten boxes to start. And you are paying. Container or unless the artist no a totally new artist and the can say okay for kakrabrem na mame time na 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 be juicy and this ah or no do do a bit me at on utia to get it you see so it was business do you get it it wasn't something bad to be a mad DJ scatty like or bribe no 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 because was but that is what drove the business. And to me, I never saw anything wrong with it. Okay. Okay. So with your time and General Marcos, did you pay? To be very honest with you, um, no, we did not. And I make answer, I said, we made some mistakes somewhere. The mistakes we made were, was, uh, were that um, when Marcos came back from Jamaica. Okay, Marcos went to Jamaica. Marcos has never recorded in Ghana. Ah, so that means... <laughs> we started recording in Jamaica. Ghanaian artists recorded no, no, in no. recording in yes. Jamaica and that's, again. That's how big. That's how big the thing was. Marcos 
Marcus's first professional recording. Say, I'm going to the studio to record my music for the first time. Say, um, will be a discover, producer be a discover. Your executive producer be said, Medo Beko Studio. No, I pick it, Marcus Beko Studio. No, only he was flown from Ghana to the UK, transited from UK to Jamaica, and then Oko do Jamaica in about a week or so. He was in a studio recording. And with Barry O'Hari, check out Barry O'Hari and check Grove Music, Grove, Grove, Grove Music, the studio where he recorded. Which year was this? And this was in 95. Grove Music is where Bujubantan and all the big artists record. Apart from Penthouse, that Buju will record. No, Grove Music, Barry O'Hari. I mean, Google it. Send it here, Google at Daruma. So Google it, Barry O'Hari. Okay, the O'Hari is O apostrophe Hari, H A R E. Barry, B A double R Y, Barry or Harry. Check the profile of the producer and wow. check, check, groove me. And that's where Marcus recorded. Like a whole album? The whole album. And we recorded, we recorded about 12 or 13, uh, 13 songs. Yeah, in Jamaica. So, do I have the right to say, say, General Marcus was the first Ghanaian artist to record in Jamaica? No, there had been other, other artists. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Ghanaian artists have been recording in Jamaica from way back. You see, if we don't know the history, we'll be telling, we'll be chatting rubbish. Ruth and Abu, they recorded in Jamaica. Ruth and Abu ever recorded in Jamaica. They've been several, ah, even Nilanti. Nilanti records in Jamaica. Which song? Did ah. you know in recent times? No, yes, in recent times. Yeah, but I'm talking about then. No, no, not then. But even now, as we see, and I make sure say, uh, 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 Nilante records in, in, in Jamaica. The reason why I'm, the reason why the reason why I'm saying that is that was in the nineties, and now most of the new guys today take that credit. Hey, Jamaican, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you try Jamaican, you, 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 I, I believe you've been hearing those. Mm -hmm. In the eighties, okay. in the eighties, Sami Nukpese quist, Samuel quist, Nukpese of of. Um, uh, uh, Roots and Abu. Okay. The whole band went to Jamaica to record. They went to Jamaica to perform on Reggae Sun Splash. Ghanaian artist. Ghanaian band. Not just an artist. Ghanaian band. Ghanaian band. An artist made of Ghanaian, Ghanaian young men. Went to Jamaica to perform on, and mind you, Reggae Sun Splash. Well, they don't do it anymore. Now it's more of Rebel Salute. Was was big was as big as Rebel Salute today, or any of the summer jams or whatever you call it. Okay. You get it. In Jamaica, Ruth and Abu was there to perform. You know, so and and also to record. So it's not like okay. Okay. you get me. Because mm -hmm. I have the General Marcos records and all that, and the sound quality, yep. the sound Akos, yep. Medewechida, yes. and yes. Cheche Kule, and those songs. Yep. Like the quality. Yep. It, most of the songs today cannot be even match. Nah. Barry Harry. Barry Harry. Check, check the profile of the man. Barry Harry. Paid for all this. Norman Ward. Is he, is he also a Jamaican? Yeah, he's Jamaican. He's Jamaican that lives in the, U, in the U.S. Yeah, Norman Ward paid for all that, you know, so for that, the record. That, that, that man, the producer, like the executive producer, he came to Ghana as a tourist, right? He came to, he came to Ghana as a tourist and went to the nightclub um, once, met Marcus, said, hey, you have talent. I'm taking you to Jamaica to record. You ever thought of that? But you see, before then, we had heard so much of such things. I mean, our own Ghanaian brothers who live abroad, I'm about, Bibi can't send me bray. Oh, me come back, pepe, pe, pe. you know, I'll yeah. file for you to come up by. You will work, you do this, nothing will happen. So we had heard that, uh, and it wasn't anything be uh, to take serious. Then Marcus met a man again. This time at Glenn's. The man said, Ah, but you are told you said, Come look for me. Mm. We didn't come. Uh, Marcus, they, like, he didn't take him serious. He didn't take him serious. The man was, the man was lodging at King David Hotel, Coco Memle. Yeah, King David. King David, yes. The man said, come. I said, come, let's talk. You know, we'll work. The man had never done anything music. He just saw Marcus felt he had, he had a gift. He was gifted, talented, and wanted to just venture into music. So Marcus was his first ever artist. And he said, I'm taking you to Jamaica so we can do it properly. You know, 
So the man goes back to the States, sends an invitation to Marcus to go get a visa. He goes to the U.S. embassy. He gets bounced. He calls them and the man says, go try the British High Commission. He goes to the British High Commission. They said, okay, you have your passport with you. No, no. They said, you have your ticket. He said, no, okay. He calls the man and says, well, they said, they asked him for my ticket. They actually said, go bring your ticket. And so he calls the man and tells the man, well, they're asking for a ticket. He said, okay, go to the British Airways wherever um, uh, outlet. There used to be a British Airways outlet around Adabraka. You see where they have, um, uh, is it Mobile House? Mobile House, okay, yeah, no Mobile House. Coming, coming down towards um, that junction. Okay, you see Adabraka, around, um, towards, towards TUC. TUC yeah. Okay, towards TUC from, from the graphic road. Okay, from the graphic road towards TUC. There's a junction where one comes up to. One comes up to, um, one lane comes up to Champion Foods. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You see? Yeah. One, one goes towards former Lava. Oh, former Lava, yeah. Okay. That junction, there used to be a British Airways outlet there. Marcus goes there, picks up an electronic ticket, goes back to the, uh, the High Commission, and they give him a visa to the, to the UK. Transit visa, actually. Three days later, Marcus is on a plane to Jamaica. It was like a dream, like... Is it is this really happening? So he lands in Jamaica. The man has family in Jamaica. They meet him, you know, take him home, gets him a very nice place. The man was actually putting up his house in Jamaica. They quickly had to, like, put finishing statues on part of it so Marcus could live, you know, like, comfortably there. So Marcus was there for, like, five months the first time. Yeah, like, five months, you know, going back, back and forth to the studio. The man had a clothes shop, you know, so he hangs out at a clothes shop when he's not in the studio. You know, he goes about meeting people, doing radio interviews and things like that. And this is, this is 99. This is 25 years ago. 25 years ago. So that means this thing we are enjoying today, nobody today is that too. 25 years ago, Marcus was going to Jamaica to record, not to just to work. After he's done recording, he comes back. <laughs> Two times, went to do the, f the first time he went, he did a single, of course, and then went back to complete the album. Okay. <laughs> That's the Shida album. Yeah, the Shida album. You get me? Yeah, and we put our, we put that album on vinyls first. Okay. We put that, we put the album on vinyls first, and then the CDs came later, and then cassettes came later. How yes, was the sales? How was the sales? That's where I said we made a mistake. Sales was massive, but we, it could have been bigger. But the problem was that we're waiting for we're waiting for the cassettes and the CDs and the records, the vinyls, to be shipped to us from the States. And there was a situation in America. Okay? And so we didn't take delivery of these things early enough. In fact, the music came in after two years oh. of promo. So when you go to any of the guys, I went to Father Dixon, he was like, ah, I'm not going to be your neighbor. You go to Kwa Miki. Kwa Miki is telling you the same thing. Ah, I'm not going to be your neighbor. Ah, I'm not going to be your neighbor. Because I remember watching the video on TV. And they were like, ah, what? In Tini, I feel um, like you guys are not really about pushing it the music but we still made some good sales we sold yeah because personally i was i, I mean i was the one you know picking the i was picking the music from eventually we decided to cut this the, the cassettes here the vinyls and the cds were coming from the state but we're cutting the cassettes because the cassettes were selling more so we're cutting the, the, the this thing at accra sounds you know i was yeah so i'll go to accra sound place the order and then i'll go and pick the boxes take them you know to our stores back home you know, and then we'll process, put a band roll on it. You know, yeah, I used to sit with, you know, a few friends at home, put a band roll on it, pack them back in the boxes, and then I take them to the shops, distribute them, and stuff like that. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I'm getting uh, enlightened and educated as, at the same time when it comes to music and entertainment in this country because most of the people today 
think oh whatever we are enjoying today just started yesterday or maybe 10 years ago let me tell you how you see you see fred Nyama. fred Nyama. um ghana movie ghana movie awards great guy sharp brain fred was working for macro kekomante when mark when mark um started working with dasabre jabra the late the late the late great so um fred was the guy that traveled around to do the promotion for that's for that's how come that's so it was on that gig to the uk that fred traveled out the first time Ooh, okay. right now fred fred became though he was a, he was a radio presenter of voter star in the voter region oh, but he okay. be, yes he was a radio presenter yes. fred Yama was a fred radio presenter so he, yeah he's a sharp guy so fred actually became a celebrity okay because he was the guy bringing each time fred comes around it means that Slip music has got music out, and of course, it's 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 an artist of a certain caliber. <laughs> you know what I mean? And Fred was the guy doing the promotion. So Fred comes to Kumasi, and everyone in Kumasi knows that Fred is in town, and everyone is calling. When you call, you're shown where to come for your CD and your envelope. Okay, and those days they were fat envelopes, not just, you know what I mean? And and they were and, and they were pumping that much into it because they were making it back. They were making it back. Do you get it? Fast forward, uh, personally, you, uh, talking about radio, because I know you've done radio. You said you met Mr. Something Something Arthur. Something Arthur, mm. yes. I, 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 that part. <laughs> okay, so I had, done, I, had done my, I had done my single, my Sweetie Sweetie, my, my version. That's on your, that's on Reggie. Part two, that's what we called it. We call it, we call it Sweetie Sweetie. The one with the dance hall kids, boom. Boom. Yeah. I'd done that one. Had made some noise. And then um we did a yes, after that I was supposed to complete my album. But you know, a few things went in a certain way that that we all didn't think it was good um, they were gonna go. Personal. So quiet. So I didn't, I didn't get to finish the album, and I got a little frustrated by the whole situation. You know, because I come from, I come from a very tough background. You know, I grew up in Kotobabi. <laughs> you know what I mean? And 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 you have to be tough, you know, to survive where I'm coming from. And so I didn't have time to waste. So it was taking quite a bit of time you know to get me in the studio to start recording and so I had started like organizing my event and stuff like that and then this whole idea of distributing General Marcus's music also came up and I was doing it and with me everything I do I put all of myself into it so one day I was going out to, you know to check on my distributors and Marcus came along, and then he said, let's swing by Music Paradise and see Mr. Wilson Arthur. I didn't even know who he was talking about. I didn't know that I had even met him earlier. So we went to the place, and oh, that same man, and I admired the man so much. Because on those two meetings that we attended at um, Afrikiko and Vi Vibe FM, the man came and made some very resounding statements and, you know, some contributions. So he earned my respect you know like i my admiration i just loved him i felt like that was going to be a great mentor you know because as a young person coming up you, you wanted to be closer to such people so we met the man and i was quiet and then he told marcus that he was setting up a radio station in takrati i was like oh this guy yeah, yeah i knew this guy's heavy so i'm just standing there listening to the conversation and then he tells marcus charlie like i get out you can't play my reggae give me oh no marcus then Marcus said, oh, me, me here, me radio, they are not sure. If this is my guy, wait, I need, yeah. Some things like that, yeah, go take him, cool. So the man was like, okay, oh, 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 is that so? So, yeah, who, who be you? Then I said, oh, my name is Rutai. The man said, 
Rutai, Reggie Rutai. I said, yes. The man said, I'll make a carry you from my back. <laughs> make a carry. Hey, if you that. If you do, if you, so if your voice that. You know, because I was as tiny as this. <laughs> so, fast forward. I get myself ready to go to Takradi, you know, to go see how the place looks like because he said he's got a job for me. He believes that I could do it. I believed I could do it. I had never done anything like that before, but I thought it was going to be a nice experience. Never tried presentation. I never tried anything like that, but I felt I could do it. Go to Baby Boy, Charlie. Man, you're my fan of fan. Oh, Charlie. Wow. <laughs> so, well, I had a friend who had lived in Takradi before. So I spoke to him about it. He said, oh, I'll take you. So one nice Sunday, we just stepped on the STC and boom, wow. Takradi. Get a Takradi. First thing, culture shock. They have a lot of bamboo trees. No, bamboo sticks. Okay. Bamboo sticks on their, on their roofs. Apparently, that's the, 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 the TV antenna. You know, yeah, they knock it, they knock it on a bamboo tree and just and mount yeah. it on the on the on their roofs. Because and analog TV. Exactly. When once you hit, once you hit Efiekuma, yeah, once you hit Takrade Efiekuma, like from Fija, when you enter Takrade proper from Efiekuma, you you begin to see this tall bamboo bamboo sticks, and I'm like, what's this? You know. Well, we enter the town, go find the the, the radio station. It was still under construction. They were still installing the equipment. Went in there. It was fun. That day, Mr. Which, Ar- which year? This was in '97. Mr. Wilson Arthur was so happy. In fact, he 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 wanted us to stay and leave the next day. It was cool. Great guy. Great guy. One of my one of my one of my mentors. I mean, like he he's one of the people that shaped me. You know. A lot of people who ask who is Mr. Wilson Arthur. Mr. Wilson Arthur is the man that owns um, the Sky Group of Companies. Currently, currently. Yes, Sky, Sky Power FM in Takradi. Yes, Sky TV. He set up the Sky Digital TV channels. You know. Ed is now an MC or DC or yes. Wasa. I, th- I think Wasa, Wasa, one of those Wasa districts is there. Yeah. You know. So I got in there and I, I loved it. I loved it. The experience of radio was great. I mean, Takradi welcomed me, and I had a lot of fun. <laughs> that is all I can say. I mean, my two it was it was less than two years. I was there for just about say twenty months because I was there in ninety seven. I left in ninety nine, but I think the impact the impact was so huge that to today, I mean, the the effect is still. It's still there. So you are, you are one of his first employees. Yeah, one first employees. I was in fact I was one of the very very first people to start speaking on Sky. It was still you know test transmitting. So, so you just uh, started you... broadcasting without having any background. No, without any background, without any background. Ninety-seven. Yes. But guess what? Big up yourself, Mr. President. You know, DJ President. DJ president. Used to be, yeah, DJ president Kennedy. There's a Kennedy, Kennedy DJ president, DJ president Kennedy. He lives in the UK. He's a he's a he's a writer, journalist. Yeah, Ghanaian. Ghanaian. He when Vibe FM started, he inspired me to go into radio. Or when I decided to go on radio, he's the one I could hear in my in my imaginations. So I kind of sounded like him. You know. He also doing reggae, reggae. Yeah. Oh, he's he's typical reggae dancer. Married to Jamaican, goes to Jamaica. Like Jamaica is a second home, you know, aside Ghana. So he's into this, you know. He's he's dancer. So well, I went on the radio. First time in Takrade, and in a matter of like two weeks. <laughs> yeah, two weeks. <laughs> who, who was your competitor then? I had none. <laughs> Is it the first radio, radio station? No, there was um, there was um, there was a GBC owned station called Twin City Radio. Twin City, okay. yeah. Okay. But yeah, oh, okay. it was like you know, like it was in Accra when yeah. when Joy FM and Vibe FM and all stations started coming. Yeah. You know, same thing. And <laughs> so from after, after was, that, it was, I was like the fresh thing in town, and yeah. everybody wanted to have. So with the twenty, uh, the twenty months you spent there, you moved straight to. 
I was shifted to Kumasi because they, 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 they started another station in, Takra, in in Kumasi. And I wanted to go and experience Kumasi. The same man. The same, yeah, the same. Yes. Yeah, so I had to move to Kumasi. And guess what? I spent five years in Kumasi and they were great years. So that's where that's where I met Andy Dusty. I had I had the chance to spend a lot of time with uh, with, with um, uh, Lord Kenya. As soon as I stepped in, a few days as before, no, I think a few days before I stepped in into Kumasi, Achiyami left for the states and didn't return. But they were the ones that said, "Charlie, bra 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 bra, oh, buddy, I'm bra bra bra." I got in anyway, out, you know. But I met Kenya. Kenya used to come to my place with his with a sports BMW in the evenings after. Was he out then? Oh yeah, of course. I mean, he was huge. Huge, huge, huge. You know, you go out with Kenya. Kenya has to always like have his windows up. You know, you couldn't move about just. But he would come around in the evenings, pick me up, drive me around Kumasi, show me places. I had a crew from the high. Tell we be shasi, check, check, be wah, check, check. I had the bus up, you know that kind of thing. Kenya was, Kenya was sweet. Kenya was sweet. You know, Kenya would just eat every night. Every night he would take me around. You know, we just go around, and you know, just chill. And then after we, I mean, when we're tired, he just dropped me off at home. And then, and then Andy Dusty came along. I met Andy later. You know, sweet guy. <laughs> you know, he would also come pick me up like that. He would go around, do our things. You know, he used to play at all the, see, in my, in my estimation, in my, you're a DJ. Yeah, and you're my brother. Yeah. But I tell you what, my greatest DJ in this whole world is Andy Dusty. Great guy. <laughs> so, I mean, this guy has become my friend. I'm with him all the time. We go to the club. When we go to the club, you know, I'll just grab my drink, come out and hang out, you know, outside, wait for him to play his turn, and then we'll step out, maybe go to another club or something like that. And I always saw him like my friend. You know, he's nothing special. My buddy. <laughs> my buddy. You know what I mean? And then one night, we go to Kiravi Night Club. And some girl says, oh, yanko sa, yanko sa, mpese meno sa. So we go into the club, and Andy's playing. And I'm listening to him change from one song to the other. Then he goes into another song. Then he goes into another song. Then I stop dancing, and I take a corner. And I'm just checking how this guy is dropping the songs. Hey! <laughs> and I'm like, hey! It's your and if you have it up, so. This guy is bad! <laughs> so I say, hey! Now you, you play for this club and how much do they pay you? You're supposed to own a part of the money. Also, how many percentage be more? Ah, you have to have a percentage of the money. So wow. ask him. I kept pushing him. I said, no, 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 no. You're not supposed to play it like this. We must on your mokka. Your punk club now in Tine and Crofone Bano. You're on chest day in Miskan now. I'm a portion of it. That's how big I saw him. You know what I mean? So, I mean, he's on radio doing whatever. But that guy is he's he's a he's crazy, crazy DJ. <laughs> crazy DJ. So with, with all this, your music background, your artistic and all that, you stopped doing music. No. I was actually having fun with it. The thing is, you see, I don't know, but the same perfectionist attitude. There are songs of mine you hear and you tell me to put them out today, but I'm just not comfortable with them. They just don't sound the way I want them to sound. Because uh, <laughs> uh, Slip Music have this compilation called Slip Dance yeah. Album. And I had some you have a single on that album. And Achiame has a song, you were, you were on it. But let's say we, even that one was a featuring. But you have a single on Slip Dance never, Album. And I'm never satisfied with any of those songs. You see, okay, Brebro Up to now. Brebro I loved it. But... My Sambra on the Slip Down Volume 2. You know, I didn't like it. Let me tell you the reason. I think Mark had booked the studio, okay, for all the artists who were supposed to record on the, on the compilation. Which year was it? This was in 98. Okay. 98, 99. Okay. So you go in there and contribute. 98. You go in there and contribute a song. So you go in there... Zap listens to you, lays the track, okay, okay like a skeleton sort of, and then you will do a guide vocal Ooh, for him. Okay. 
and then he will properly sit and listen to your voice on it, the guide vocal, and then properly build the beat so that you will come in later and do your proper voice and then done. As I know, voicing 